Good morning. My presentation will be on secession and EU internal enlargement. The main question of my intervention is which response should the European Union give when facing a secession process from a member state in the case that the new state expresses its wish to obtain the member status of the European Union? The answer to this question depends mainly, one, on the possibility of the changing of the position that the European Union has adopted until today with regard to secession from a member state, simultaneously revealed by the non-immediate entry attitude towards Scotland and the not so veiled opposition toward Catalonia. Second, it depends on what conditions should be fulfilled in order for a secession state to be considered as a new member state of the European Union. As it is well known, both recent European secessionist movements, Scottish and Catalan, presenting themselves as pro-European, with the request at the same time of independence and of immediate entry into the EU as a new member state as new member states. Nonetheless, both, both movements have been perceived by the EU institutions as a danger to the European project. The issue at stake here are twofold. On the one hand, there is the problem of the condition of access to EU as a new member state without complying with the standard procedures of entry set out by Article 49 of the treaty, which provides the legal basis for any European state to join the EU. On the other hand, there is the question if secession of pro-European minority groups would strengthen the Union, inspiring a new process of federalization of the EU. It is well known that any European country may apply for EU membership if it respects the democratic values of the EU and is committed to promoting them. Since the democratic framework seems to be the most attractive for the recent European secessionist movements, particularly, particularly against the anti-liberal stigma that was often attributed to separatist movements, and since the purpose of recent secessionist movement is to correct the form of existing state through democratic means, it would be important that the European institutions start to take into consideration the possibility of internal enlargement the possibility of entry of new member states born inside EU from secessionist processes without the duty for these new states to comply with the conditions set out by Article 49. So this possibility should be taken seriously by EU institutions since a seceding region is not precisely in the same position as a third country towards enlargement. This, in my opinion, for a number of reasons. First, EU law is already applied in those seceding states since long. B, the existence of EU citizenship automatically acquired through member states' nationality. C, the pro-European desire to remain inside a supranational political organization. It would be important for the European institutions to take into consideration the three reasons indicated in order to suggest what condition should be met to accept a new state born from a process of secession as the new member, as a new member of the European Union. To accept an easier internal enlargement than an enlargement to third states, it should be acknowledged that. The first, first of all, and it's the A point previously said, first, the fact that EU law 
already applies in the region that are seceding, these imply that it is not necessary for the new state to fulfill the accession criteria. In fact, the EU acquis, the body of common rights and obligations that are binding in all EU countries, is already accepted in the seceding region. Internal enlargement would ensure that EU law continues to apply the day after independence to the same territory that it applied the day to the day before. Moreover, respect and commit to the values set out in Article 2 of the Treaty on the European Union would be demonstrated by the democratic process followed to become an independent state. The respect for human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality and the rule of law during the process towards independence should be one of the conditions sine qua non for the recognition of independence. While the respect for human rights, including the rights of persons belonging to minority, minorities and respect for a pluralistic society and for non-discrimination, tolerance, justice, solidarity and equality between women and men should be included as fundamental principle in the new constitution of the state. Second reason to accept an easier internal enlargement, and it's the B letter. Moreover, it should be acknowledged that the existence of the EU citizenship should be taken seriously, especially for those citizens of the seceding state residing, residing in other EU countries. The denial of the internal enlargement would mean for EU citizens residing abroad the immediate loss of the rights connected to European citizens that permit the non-discrimination in terms of access to rights, social but also political and civil, on the basis of nationality and the impossibility for the sedentary ex-EU citizens to keep the status of European citizenship. Continuity of EU citizenship should be guaranteed since a part of them living, since a part of EU citizens living in EU and not in the seceding state would lose immediately and irrevo irrevocably the rights connected to it. Taking into consideration internal enlargement would protect the region citizens in, term of, in terms of continuity of EU citizenship. The existence of European citizenship puts the seceding region in a different position from a third country, where no EU citizenship is acknowledged. For these reasons, internal enlargement should be recognized in order to promote a Europe of citizens narrative against the mere Europe of states narrative. C, letter C, the third final reason for internal enlargement. European institutions should take into consideration the pro-European desire to remain inside the supranational political organization since the process of federalization could be reinforced, in my opinion, by the entrance of newborn states whose European afflatus is much more significant than that of many of the existing EU member states. Since the greatest criticism to the European Union from many quarters is that it has interrupted the process of federalization in many of the areas where it began, the emergence of a new pro-European, the emergence of new pro-European states could resume the interrupted process. Secessions from member states could be a means to propose a new federalization of the EU. The question is, and in my opinion, the answer is yes, is if the secession of a pro-European group would strengthen the Union. Since a secession from the Union, such as Brexit, 
has signified an interruption in the European inter integration process, it would be interesting to know if a secession in the Union, such as the Catalan one from Spain or the Scottish from UK, would be, on the contrary, a generator of a new wave of federalization of Europe. These secessionist processes could be good candidates to constitute Europe as a federation. In my opinion, secessions in could be the proxy for a new process of federalization. Europe could be, Europe could be subject of a new federalization dynamic thanks to a proliferation of states due to internal enlargement. Conclusively, the secessionist phenomenon in processes of supranational integration can represent an important factor for the softening of territorial conflicts. In fact, we are moving in scenarios that see already in place paths of decomposition and rearticulation of state sovereignty, which registers a deep attenuation of its characters of absoluteness. In particular, with reference to the European Union, one could even go so far as to reconfigure a demand for secession from external to the member state to internal to the EU, relativizing its disruptive scope. By contrast, the refusal to initiate a political debate on the secessionist issue in the European institutional bodies, an attitude that has prevailed until now, can only result in the affirmation of the state-centering vision far from this perspective of a deeper political integration of the EU. I said that the answer to the question of the paper, uh, if the European Union uh, should give, uh, um, uh, should start and open to internal enlargement, uh, the answer to the question, I said at the beginning, depends depending on two issues. The first is the one that I um, I just mentioned, and the second one uh, is uh, the question depends on what conditions should be fulfilled in order for a secessionist state to be considered as a new member state of the European Union. As I said, to the first answer, I the first question I answer with the three. Uh, issues on why, in my opinion, EU should take into consideration internal enlargement. And to the second question, the problem is that uh, how it is important to indicate the minimum requirements an aspiring seceding territory should have in order to apply for EU accession afterwards. Um, in fact, the lawfulness of the secession can permit, in my opinion, a smooth transition from secession to new, to new member state of European Union. As you know, not all secession are lawful, as was clearly highlighted by the Canadian Supreme Court's landmark decision on the secession of Quebec. But if a set of common principles can be identified in order for secession to be lawful, then a seceding territory, in my opinion, could be accepted as a new EU member state. The EU response to internal enlargement should depend on how the secession is achieved and how to define that achievement legal. The legal and political consequence of a declaration of independence depend on the way in which the new state was born. Certainly, recent practice seems to reveal that respect for the democratic principle is necessary, but as you know, is not considered sufficient to absorb the secessionist process. At present, as you know, treaties on European Union recognize the right of member states to secede from union, from the union, but there are no specific rules on secession. Separation is still subject to the existing rules of international law and constitutional arrangements of the member state. So it is still necessary to look to these legal orders to envisage the possibility to talk of secession in terms of legality.
In any case, even if there are differences among EU member states, there should be nonetheless principle shared among most EU countries, which would permit the definition of what a lawful secession process would look like in the European Union. According to the common constitutional tradition of its member state and to international law. The procedure, first of all, cannot be unilateral on the part of the seceding territory without the involvement of the central government, and the procedure itself must be agreed among the parties. Second, the procedure must comply with democratic principles through the involvement of the people by means of referenda and uh, the um, guarantee of the principle or the compliance with the principle of rule of law. Looking at the question of legality of or illegality of secession is necessary to avoid simply admitting that law cannot deal with secessionist crisis and that it all comes down to power politics. So it is necessary to ask whether the issue of legality when referring to secession can be discussed in terms of a liminal legality that resides on the border between internal and international legal order. And if this legality, waiting for EU law to govern internal secession, is sufficient to legitimize EU internal enlargement to secession state. In fact, at present, the problematic dimension of legality in secessionist process is still to be found in the border between constitution and international law, since European law does not have any um, uh, does not have uh, any rules on secession. I think that it's important to follow the well-known reference of the Cypriot. Supreme Court of Canada uh, that um, thanks uh, to which it is uh, now necessary to admit that the expression of popular will through a referendum, free and open to all, in favor of secession, cannot leave the central state indifferent. Rather, after a vote in favor of secession by part of the state, the central state is obliged to enter into negotiation with the group that intends to separate, nego to separate negotiation that do not necessarily have to result in secession. The court, while not recognizing an obligation for the state to accept a unilateral declaration of independence, does not deny that a state should allow separation in cases where a clear majority in a given region supports that request. Based on the reference of Canadian court, we can deduce that when there is an obligation for this, in, we can deduce that when there is an obligation from the central state to diligently search for a political solution to the crisis, the secessionist group must not declare independence before the end of negotiation. This is the opinion of the Canadian court. My view differs on Canadian reference. Why? Because I retain that if, and only if, the process through which the separatist movement arrived at the referendum was legitimate and agreed by all parties, then legality of secession would allow, or better, what I call liminal legality, the legality that stays between international law and constitutional law, the liminal legality would allow something different from what was recommended by the Canadian court. Liminal legality would allow first, would allow for first, the inevitability of secession, of secession following a referendum in favor of independence, no matter how the negotiations are going or have gone. Of course, if the referendum was agreed by all parties. And second, uh, liminal legality would allow for the possibility for the secessionist group, after the vote with a clear majority in favor of secession, to declare independence immediately, even before the end of negotiation, and the possibility for the new state to enter European Union as a member state 
even before the recognition by the parent state. This test of living and legality between an internal legal system and the international order could occur when the process to reach through which secession is, period, is pursued or was pursued is legitimate and respect the democratic principle. The Scottish case can be considered an excellent example of secession process through the accomplishment of a consensual referendum. In my opinion, the liminal legality of Scottish secession would have certainly allowed the entrance, the entry in the European Union of Scotland as a new member state in the case of success of Scottish independence. The only problem I see, and these are my conclusions, remains the only problem that remains to be discussed is of course the question of which democratic rules are useful for European system to prove the internal lawfulness of secession. It would be necessary to understand if and how it is possible to democratically determine the external borders of a new state, which instruments would be the most appropriate for that and would be uh, legitimate and uh, could oblige the central state to accept the secession. Here arises the problem of the difficult relationships between secession and democracy and of the value of the majority rule and of the referendum in the secessionist process and, um, and the problem that remains problem open is if when referring to the definition of new external borders if majority rule and referendum can be considered respectful of the accepted democratic principle it is well known in fact that majority is an artificial rather than a neutral concept and can be contrasted, constructed through political and legal decisions by including or excluding people of group or groups from the right to vote. These things have to be discussed deeply. In the European Union in particular, secession should be pushed, as you all uh, say, in compliance with the fundamental values of the European Union, such as democracy and the rule of law, Article 2, and the compliance uh, to the common constitutional tradition. So the compliance of a seceding uh, territory must be to the principle of Article 2. Um, uh, the seceding uh, territory should respect the rule of law and democratic principle. So in order for it to accede to the European Union, the whole process leading to secession on the part of the seceding territory should be accomplished actor, according to the principle uh, enshrined in Article 2 and derived from Article 6 of the Treaty of European Union. And this condition should be followed uh, when accomplishing a seceding process. Thank you for your attention.